Don't miss anything. You got this. You got this. The microphone. Not like you don't have a video to check back on. As long as they record. Welcome to the July 18th City of Oldsmar Council meeting. It is 7 p.m. I'm calling this meeting to order. Good evening, everyone. We're going to start out by our invocation and our pledge of allegiance to the flag by our city attorney, Tom Trask. Please rise. Our Heavenly Father, we come humbly before you in a time of sorrow. Uh, the death of Tarpon Springs Police Officer Mike Trill burdens our hearts, a burden shared throughout Pinellas County. Major Trill was a larger-than-life figure in the law enforcement community and served the past 28 years with the city of Tarpon Springs. We pray that you will comfort his wife and three children and welcome him into your heavenly kingdom. We are hopeful that your grace and love will be with the Trill family and those present here tonight who share in their pain and loss. This we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Thank you, Tom, for that. Mm -hmm. Our first item on the agenda is the Oldsmeyer Open Forum. Each speaker will be recognized once and will be limited to five-minute presentation on any subject. Please state your name and your address for the record. The Open Forum will conclude at 7.30 p.m. Anybody on this side would like to uh, come up and speak to the council? Come on up. Come on up. No takers this time. I'll always take an opportunity. Good evening, council, staff, and our community. Suda Yantis Cologne, 402 Arlington Avenue East, Oldsmar, Florida. Just wanted to keep you apprised on our wonderful dance and theater program. Um, I know Mayor was very kind to be at the last show and was very proud of our sets and how they turn. Uh, we are rolling full head into Peter Pan Jr., which is our next show scheduled for October 14th. And I think I even have one of my students back here in the corner, Mr. Andrew, I saw over there, uh, one of our students here. We also had a wonderful theater summer camp this year. Um, we had uh, 11 students attend and four assistants helping us. And the kids had a blast. I had them do a nice little um, an evaluation and they all want to come back. They didn't want to change anything. I didn't get any new input, so that meant they had a great time. And then, of course, Miss Suda's Dancers has started our summer program, and our show comes up on August 19th for Miss Suda's Dancers. So thank you for your time, and I appreciate having the opportunity to keep you updated on our wonderful performing arts programs. Thank you. Thank you, Suda. Suda. Anyone else on this side of the room would like to speak to the council? All right, let's go to this side of the room. Come on up. Hey everybody, Melissa Colmo, 301 Park Boulevard. I'm coming on behalf of the Oldsmar Neighborhood Association. I just wanted to let everybody know and invite everybody um, to our next community meeting, which is next Wednesday, July 26th at 6.30 in Tico Hall. We will be having Jessica McCracken from the Emergency um, Department with Pinellas County coming to our meeting. We're also having Mike Boylan from Mike's Weather Page. He's going to be there. And we are talking all about hurricanes, hurricane buddies, and how we can better help each other in Oldsmar, become more connected, and really, you know, extend that hand and do what we love to do, which is be community, be neighbors. Also, school is starting on, on August 10th, and everybody here knows what that means. PTA, PTO, please support your local PTA. We have two elementary schools in Oldsmar, Oldsmar Elementary and Forest Lakes. You're, even if you don't have a child that comes to our school, your um, joining the PTA helps to create a stronger community. I'll be speaking more about that later. Um, also, we are looking for volunteers and participants for the walking school bus. The walking school bus will help um, the city of Oldsmar with the Safe Routes to School initiative that we're working on. That grant, if we have the programs in place, we're more apt to be um, accepted for that with, with, with our application. So 
Um, I look forward to seeing everybody on July 26th at 6.30 in Tico Hall. Thank you. Thank you. Come on up. Welcome, Tony. I was going to bring a tiny picture, but no, bring the big picture. Tony Gross, 711 Santon Leaf Avenue. Um, my name is not a reflection of my personality, unless we get into a fight. <laughs> but um, last Sunday was the 12th anniversary of Frank's United States Army Corporal Frank R. Gross's combat theater, Death in Afghanistan. It was July the 16th of 2011. He was Oldsmar's only known KIA death with a home of record listed as Oldsmar. He loved his hometown as we do too. So it is fitting for me to stand here today and thank you, Mayor Dan, City Council members, Felicia, City Manager Felicia, Leisure Services Chip Potts, I don't see Chip Potts here anywhere. Chip, um, John Linz, Karen, Bill and former city council member, Linda Norris and Jerry Beaverlin too. I'm here telling you thank you for supporting us and remembering the fallen. I truly appreciate the fact that we were included in this year's Memorial Day ceremony. Appreciate that. And in the past, you've let us use the park, you've let me use the park and other services as well. And I just want you to know I appreciate that. And that makes a real difference. I love Oldsmar. But one doesn't have to look very far to see how Oldsmar remembers the fallen. Right behind you is the Purple Heart flag. Out there is the picture of Frankie. And I just want to express my appreciation that you do that and you do it well. And it really is a comfort to me that year after year, you embrace Craig and me and Natalie and the other three Gold Star families in Oldsmar. But thank you very much. Thank you, Tony. Thank you thank for you remembering. <laughs> Anybody else on this side of the room? Come on up. Carla Nassi, 374 Ventura Drive, Oldsmar, Florida. Good evening, Council. I'm here to suggest a solution for item number 12 on tonight's agenda. This item is to appoint the voting delegate for the Florida League of Cities Annual Conference being held this month, next month, in Orlando. Vice Mayor Knapp has shown that he truly represents the citizens of Oldsmar not just individuals or special interest groups. He has earned the honor of casting the city's votes. Conversely, Mayor Siraki has shown that he has violated the oath that he took to represent the city of the citizens of Oldsmar as our mayor. For those that may not be aware, there is a lawsuit filed by one of Mayor Siraki's campaign contributors against the city of Oldsmar, the previous mayor, and the previous council, but not naming Mayor Siraki, even though he was part of that council. He attended that meeting as a council member and voiced no objection to the meeting. On April 20, 2023, Mayor Siraki was deposed as part of that lawsuit by the plaintiff's attorney. After reading the deposition and reviewing the exhibits, it appears that Mayor Siraki has been working behind the scenes for the plaintiff, exchanging text messages with information he thought might be helpful to the plaintiff. Mayor Siraki even deleted some texts from his phone in violation of the Florida Sunshine Statutes, but they showed in other exhibits in the deposition. This all shows that he was assisting the plaintiff and working against the citizens of Oldsmar. Until this is resolved, Mayor Siraki has forfeited his privilege to represent this city. 
I strongly suggest that Vice Mayor Knapp attend and be appointed to cast votes for the city of Oldsmar at the Florida League of Cities annual conference next month. And furthermore, that Mayor Siraki not attend this, any other conference or travel on behalf of the city since he has shown that he works for campaign contributors and special interest groups and does not work for the benefit of the city of Oldsmar and her citizens. Anybody else on this side of the room would like to speak to the council, please come up. Hello, Tom Price, 418 Arlington Avenue East, Oldsmar. Um, here on a business, business um, opportunity or thing. Um, Hennessy's, which is, has received the business award from the city, uh, much appreciated, is putting on our first annual rib smoke off this Saturday in the parking lot of Hennessy's. Um, all our proceeds are going to go to Oldsmar Fire Rescue for them to buy Christmas gifts or, or bicycles, whatever is needed for them. Um, the event's going to be from 12 to 5. We're going to have a, a dunk tank for the kids to play, um, a real family-friendly type thing. Um, we'll have uh, free line dancing lessons from 1 to 3. We'll have live music. Um, we'll have judges. And right, we, we're going to cut it off at 8 smokers cooking, and um, today we're at 10. And so we, we can't take any more just for many reasons. But just wanted to invite everybody to come out. Um, I know the downtown development's going through the snags. We moved here in 2018, hoping that the downtown development would move forward. But as any development, it's take, going to take time. So we're going to start doing more events on Saturday and on our properties to try to drum up and give people in downtown something to do on the weekends. So this is very kid friendly. Um, like I said, feel free to come out, bring your families. Um, and you guys have these. I'll leave some copies in the back of the room. And uh, if, uh, that's it if, as far as that goes. For the Lafayette speed bumps or calming devices, just to let you know, and I'm not here to complain, um, I can hear Lafayette from my house. They've just diverted to Arlington Avenue. I mean, they use Arlington as the freeway now. So they turn there at uh, St. Pete Drive or State Street, then they turn on Arlington, and then they can speed all the way down to the next stop sign. And then they go back and they get back on Lafayette. So, I mean, it's a good move on the city's part. We put the speed bumps out there. But just so you all know, it just kind of redirected the race car traffic. And, uh, Unfortunately, right in front of my house is a sewer jump, and they love that because they can go over it, and they think they're going airborne. But anyway, I appreciate your time. Appreciate everything you do, and uh, I'll leave some of these in the back for the other folks. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Joe, you want to come up? Sure. Mm. Call, Tom. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Joseph Mole, 504 Shore Drive East. Um, Mr. Mayor, um, for the record, uh, I have known Dan since I've moved to Florida. He is a man of integrity, honesty, and character. And I will attest to that uh, at any time to anybody. So um, thank you, Dan. Um, i here for two reasons tonight. I don't have any prepared remarks. My, my, the first reason I came was to learn a little bit about our city government and how it works. The second is to stand in opposition for the stop bumps that uh, I visit seven times a day uh, each way, I'm seven on the way to work and the seven on the way uh, back from work. Um, they're causing damage to our cars. They have not provided any value. I think there was good intention of slowing down people on Shore Drive and on Lafayette, but they're not working. We saw people driving on lawns. Uh, we sort of remedied that. 
But uh, my question is, is when are they coming down? The experiment is a failed one. Um, there are other remedies, and this is not one that uh, we should have taken up. All right, anything else? That's it. Thank you very much Thank for you. coming in, Joe. Thank you very much. Yes, come on up, please. Hi, I'm Jill Watson. I live at 300 Lafayette Boulevard, Oldsmar, right at the stop sign where our speed bump problem started. I want to say thank you for the speed bumps to try to help tame the traffic because being on a main way like we are at 11 p.m. every night, usually the cars are going super fast. You hear them revving their engines and screeching, and that has stopped on Lafayette since the speed bumps have been put in. Um, my kids play in the front yard, and there's definitely less speeding. I'm sorry they went to Arlington. I kind of assumed that's what would happen. But um, I just want to say thank you for trying that. I hope that we can keep them or at least another way of slowing traffic because it has made a difference, especially for being the first house on the block. And um, like cars used to get up to 40 miles per hour by the time they reached my house from the stop sign. So it, and often, multiple times a day. So thank you and hopefully we can continue that. Wonderful, thank you for coming you, in, Joe. Jill. Anyone else in the side of the room would like to speak to the council? Anyone else in the audience coming late want to speak to the council? Anyone? All right, with that, I'm going to close the Oldsmar Open Forum. Our next item on our agenda is our Oldsmar Community Minute, which will be read by our city clerk, Kristen Garcia. Community Minute. <clears throat> Register for Alert Pinellas. Alert Pinellas is a free <clears throat> service for residents and businesses to receive alerts about extreme weather, emergencies, and other important community news. You choose how to receive alerts for up to five locations in Pinellas County. Registration only takes a few moments. Know your evacuation zone. To help make decisions about the safety of yourself and your family when mandatory evacuations are ordered, Oldsmar is either evacuation zone A or B. <coughs> Mobile home park residents are also impacted. Visit the Pinellas County Zone site to find your zone and discover evacuation routes and local shelters. Citizens Academy, registration is now open for the class of 2023. Courses will be held on Thursday evenings from 6.30 to 9 p.m. from September 7th to November 2nd. It's a great way for Oldsmar citizens and businesses to learn more about how their government works through hands-on activities and lectures. Registration is required. Please contact the city clerk's office. That's it. All right, great job. Thank you so much. I'm looking for a motion on the next agenda item, approval of additional new agenda items 7, 9, 10, and 11. So moved. Motion, how about a second? Second. second. I got a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Next item on our agenda <laughs> is awards and recognition, and I'm going to give turn that over to our <coughs> council member, Jared Buckman. Thank you, Mayor. Um, in light of my wife being positive and me being protective of public health, I'm gonna ask for some assistance with handing these out, but I'm gonna read the speech from up here, if that's okay. Okay. That's a good idea. Um, Kristen, you wanna help? You want? I can help, let me help. Go ahead, yeah, go ahead. That'd be great, thank you. Who wants to go to your chair right now? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Vice Mayor. <laughs> All right. We're just you spreading just it. You, you'll know. You'll get it. So, so tonight we recognize uh, volunteer efforts of a remarkable group of citizens who've demonstrated dedication and creativity in shaping our city's new logo. Tonight we present the City Council Manager Award to those citizens who participated in the design of our new city logo. This project has been a shining example of community engagement at its finest. At the start, these citizens offered their time to take part in focus groups organized by Creative Pinellas and city staff with the aim of developing a brand promise for Oldsmar. They recognized that our city's logo was an essential element that should reflect everything that Oldsmar is and has to offer. Their participation taught us the possibilities are boundless when citizens come together bound by a shared purpose. The city was in much need of a logo that reflected its brand. 
As we now know, the logo is not the city seal. City records and instruments can now be certified with the official seal, while the logo can help us to identify city programs, city operations, and other incentives, other initiatives. It will be a symbol that residents and visitors will instantly recognize and resonate with, forging a deeper connection to our city and instilling a sense of pride in all who call it home. Through, innovations pro through, through innovative programs such as this, we ensured that the citizens of our city had a voice in the design of this new logo. They understood that true success for our city lies in creating a visual representation and fostering a sense of belonging and unity among our residents. So on behalf of the residents, the city council, our charter officials, and city staff, we extend our heartfelt gratitude to each member of this exceptional group. Your unwavering commitment, creativity, and dedication have forever left an indelible mark on our city's identity. Thank you for helping shape the future of our city with your talent, vision, and dedication in this process. Your efforts will be cherished and celebrated for years to come. With that, Q Andrew, and I'm going to read off all of the names. I think the, very, the, last, the last four are not here. So Quinn Trio, who I believe is not here. Tyler Runkle. Oh, Paul Tyler's Cook. Come on up. Tyler, come on up. Paul Cook. Jillian Watson. Joseph Santana. This might be a monster uh, job. Suda. Who's she? Who's Suda? Yeah. <laughs> Melissa Como. Just stay, 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 stay. Don't, 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 don't go, don't go. Pamela Settle. Sharon Fisher. Donna Perkins. Dory Jean. Rochelle Correa. Did I say that right? Yeah. <laughs> Korea. <sighs> Kathy Hayes. I know Rebecca Afonso has moved. Susan Burness. Rochelle's done. Susan Oliver. Burness. Dana Barrow. Ashley Juno. Patrick Tolliver. My second favorite redhead, Kalinda Norris. Second favorite. Oh, yeah. Well, the first one's not here, Megan Buckman. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll come into something. Megan, Megan Buckman as well. So I will just stand behind. Thank you. Yeah. Oh. Andrew, oh, thank yeah. you so much for the help. You're very well. Wait, 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 wait. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Everybody get I think Kalinda's in before we take a picture of your face. Everybody. Mm -hmm. Squeeze together. You want us together? Do you want to take Either way, that's up to you. Let's put the whole council behind. Andrew, come on up. We want to take a picture with us. Come on. Yep. Oh, we all get in here? Yeah. Yep, that's your good side. Yep, you got it. Hold on. We're getting back here. I'm not starting. Uh, uh, they have me going back there or something. Oh, you're really testing my, uh, my abilities to hold this phone up for a long period of time. We got it, guys. Perfect. Wait, I didn't smile. <laughs> oh, man. We'll shout that in for you. Thank, Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you, you so much. We're good. Thank you, Mayor. All right. Next item on the agenda is uh, item two, the presentation of the Business of the Quarter Award for the second quarter. We're going to move that agenda item to next month. Uh, there has been a, so we're just going to move that. No problems. Yeah, motion to. Do we need a motion? We have a date certain. We don't. You want to set it to a date certain? Yeah. Right. Motion to postpone uh, agenda item two to the first meeting in August. Okay. Second. So that be August 1st. August 1st. I got a motion in the second. Any other discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Next item on the agenda is our community redevelopment agency. And Councilmember Buckman, do you have anything to disclose? Thank you, Mayor. Um, disclosing my primary residence is located within the CRA. I've already <laughs> followed my disclosure report with the clerk. Thank you very much. And then with that, we're going to bring up Laura Smith from GAI Community uh, Solutions to discuss the possibilities, next steps for our city-owned property near City Hall. Welcome. 
Thank you so much. Good evening, council members, city manager, and Mr. Trask, of course, city attorney. Thank you. Um, it's wonderful to be here in Oldsmar. The weather's so nice today. It's so rare. It usually rains on us when we drive <laughs> here in the evenings, and it didn't today, which is great. Um, so we're just going to go through some of the sort of status items related to our RFP for the redevelopment of the um, town center site where City Hall is currently located right across the street. We're going to review the status of that, where we're currently positioned, what your next steps are, and what options you have um, to coincide with those next steps. So first and foremost, let's see. Oh, there we go. So the timeline for this RFP stipulated that the proposals will be due by June 12th. As you know, the RFP was published on March 22nd. We had a pre-proposal meeting on the 11th. We also entertained uh, written questions and comments that came in and responded to those alongside staff. Um, June 12th came and went. We did not receive any submittals. Um, and we did get notification, or the city received notification, from each of the five shortlisted firms that they would not be responding. And uh, more detailed explanations were received from two of the shortlisted firms, and that was Stanbury Development Group and Pridgen Development, who both um, sort of wrote more detailed letters or emails describing why they were not responding to the RFP. So that kind of paints a picture of where we are right now. You haven't gotten any responses to the RFP, but you did get some feedback from two of the shortlisted firms, and they gave us some pretty insightful information in the responses that we received back from them. So your next steps. There's a handful of options that are available at this point. But the first thing that I want to bring your attention to is that the options that we're going to walk through today are each discrete strategies. That does not mean that there is not the potential or option to have some variation there. So we've presented them as discrete strategies because we think they are very singularly focused, but there is always the option for a little bit of adjustment if that's what we need to do in order to progress forward however you so choose. Um, one of the things that we'll be undertaking in most of these options, but not all of them, is GAI will be reaching out to the five shortlisted firms to sort of interview them and get a feel for maybe some of the reasons why they did not respond and dig a little deeper into the explanations that we received from the two shortlisted firms who did give us explanations just to kind of dive a little deeper into some of the items that they referenced. But I think the most important thing to take away right now is there has been an enormous amount of time and energy. All of you have spent a lot of time and energy and resources to bring this to where it is right now. We've gone through the vision and mission process. You visioned this site. You worked with your public. You brought everyone along with you. So this was an incredibly transparent process, certainly one of the more transparent RFP developer solicitations that I have ever seen. And it has really been, I think, very effective in that it created an RFP that was very clear and really was pushing forward what the community wanted to see on that site. So I want to applaud you for that and also remind you, we've come a long way. And just because we didn't get any responses the first time is not necessarily an indication that that is still not a great vision and mission that you've come up with. Good. Um, also, these options that we're going to go through, none of these guarantee that someone's going to respond the next time or that you'll get a proposal mm -hmm. that is desirable to you. But these are great options depending on how you would like to move forward in your next steps. So with that said, we're going to move on to option A. So your first option would be to simply allow this formal solicitation effort to conclude. This would mean you're not going to proceed further with soliciting this site for development or trying to attract a developer to this site specifically. We've provided you with some pros and cons here. Um, of course, this could result in unsolicited proposals being submitted. You've received those before, so you've been there. Mm -hmm. The good news is we spent a lot of time and effort coming up with a vision, a mission, a weighting criteria, and scoring matrix 
So you have all of these resources at your disposal, even if you end up choosing to go that route to evaluate those unsolicited proposals if they come in. Um, some of the cons are that this is going to essentially eliminate any schedule or timeline. So you don't know when you may receive something from someone in an unsolicited proposal. Those, you may not see anything for a year. You may get 20 in six months. You just don't know. Um, also, those proposals that you do get could be pretty different from the mission and vision that you established and were articulated so specifically in the RFP. So the quality of those and how closely they adhere to that vision for the site and the overall mission for development of that site is not something you'll be able to dictate ahead of time. And that still leaves you with the question of how you want to proceed with the City Hall building itself. Um, there was a lot of conversation around that in the various workshops that we had, so you'll still need to address that topic in option A. Oops, I skipped option B. Option B um, would be to open the RFP up to the other firms that responded to the letter of interest. So, you know, when we published the LOI request, you got back about nine responses and we opted to go with the five that were most comprehensive and most consistent with the vision and mission and most complete um, as a shortlisted group to introduce to the RFP. So one option, of course, would be to now open that up to the ones who responded to the LOI but that we did not open the RFP up to. Um, the benefit of that, some of the pros, would be that this aligns with your existing process, reaffirms those vision and mission goals that you've already established. Um, the, the folks that were participating in that LOI also have a good familiarity with the project because they responded to the LOI, so they've been introduced to all of that. So they're a logical group to contact based on that expressed interest. One of the bigger drawbacks is that they may not be receptive to responding given that they weren't shortlisted the first go around. Um, but also, you run the same sort of concerns in that you still have other issues that you will need to address either way, even if you went with this other group, um, especially some of those issues that may come up through the RFP that were identified by the five shortlisted firms that did not respond. Um, option C would be to postpone for at least 90 to maybe 120 days, <coughs> issue a new or possibly revised RFP, and that would be with consideration of feedback received. All of the options we discussed from this point forward, which will be option C, we've also got an option D and an option E, all of those will involve GAI reaching out and interviewing these five firms that didn't respond and really trying to dig into articulating exactly what the issue was that resulted in a non-response. Um, so option C being to postpone would still allow us to clarify that original RFP. Depending on what we hear back from folks, we may be able to issue an addendum um, at a future date or revise the RFP and go all the way back out to start over. Um, this could potentially open the door to a new group of um, especially some of the teaming situations. <laughs> And um, we'll have to wait and see if that's something that maybe is a market condition at the moment where some of these folks may be a little bit apprehensive given some of the market conditions to enter into a new deal right now. Uh, this also fully maintains transparency. It would require you probably to go back out on an LOI again. And it would delay your schedule. Um, and of course, depending on how the LOI goes, it may again alter the type of program that you end up getting back from anyone that responds. Um, option D, this would essentially be an open call. This would be the city announcing and publishing that they intend to dispose of the property, do a disposition notice to sell the property. There's a process associated with that, of course, but this would be an open call condition. We would still interview the five individuals who did not respond to the RFP initially, um, hopefully to identify if any of them may be interested in participating in that response if there were an open call and determining if there are conditions under which they might respond to something like that. Um, 
while this could keep some of those interested parties in play, some of the drawbacks would be the delay in schedule and that it may be slightly less transparent to go this route. It would also probably require a workshop um, and it, it gives a little bit of the control back to the developers because it's an open call condition as opposed to a more structured RFP process. And then option E, of course, um, in this option, we would also be interviewing those five firms. Uh, but in this situation, we would be reaffirming the details of the RFP with those firms. And we would extend the submittal deadline for 60 days and then allow them to take that time to prepare and submit if any of the reaffirmed RFP conditions help alleviate some of the issues that may have resulted in a non-response. The good news here is this would, option E would keep those existing five shortlisted firms in play. We would still be reaching out to them. We would still be saying this is exclusively for the five of you. It would give us the ability to issue an additional statement of addressing some of those issues. Once that we can articulate those clearly, we could put an addendum out with um, the notice for the 60 day extension to state that there's a 60 day extension and a new timeline, but also to clarify some of those issues that come forward out of these interviews. Um, this, of course, would delay schedule, but that being the drawback, it would also probably not be a material delay in schedule much farther beyond where we are right now because we'd still have that 60-day window for them to respond. Um, I would not say that we have a singular option here that we're going to say is your best bet. I will tell you, you have expended a lot of time and resources and energy, all of you have, and it would seem that a good option here would be to at least take that effort and see if we can get that forward a little more. So from that perspective, options E and option C are probably most consistent and would keep you limited to that group while preserving all of that effort you've already put into this while staying very transparent in the process, which I know was your larger goal from the beginning. So at this time, I'd like to entertain any questions that you have. We can walk through any of these options, but ideally that's, those are our, our options for next steps. And like I said, while we've presented them here as discrete options, there's, there's some flexibility there if we need to make some adjustments. Wonderful. Thank you, you and Owen, both coming out today. Oh, and, yeah, and, and, and Owen Beitch is here yeah. also, <laughs> in case you have any questions for or either one. Dr. Beitch. All right, well, let's open it up. Anybody would like to start? Any questions? Councilmember Gannon, I'm sure you have some. Um, I was actually wondering if we could put the options sort of, <coughs> I, I don't know if that's possible, to put the options screens like Side by side by the, side. Yeah, side by I side. I tried right? so hard to make yeah, them okay. all fit on one thing, and then I realized I'm going to be able to read that. <laughs> Can you show me option C just briefly? Absolutely. Thank you. I appreciate your flexibility. Yeah. Um, okay, that's... That was what I um, what I thought, and then um, E. E, you said? Yeah. 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 Laura, it might be easy to do oh. if you use uh -huh. shorter. Thank you. Oh yeah, good call. Always count. Oh, I, I'm on this. Oh. I don't have a mouse. Okay. Otherwise, <laughs> I'm well, like I'm. I I'm try. I'm Our dexterous, city but not that dexterous. Okay. Our city attorney has just handed me his copy. Can you believe that? What a gentleman. What a Thank gentleman. you so much, Mr. Trask. I only um, brought two copies, and I've already marked on mine, and I'm pretty sure Owen has already made notes on his. <laughs> Luckily, you won't be able to read our handwriting, so. Okay. Um, so, Laura, option C, um, mm -hmm. when you say would likely require LOI, mm -hmm. do you mean we'd have to go back to the LOI position we were in in approximately November? It depends on the timing, but yes, I mean, you'd, it would most likely result in you going back to an LOI situation. Um, that doesn't necessarily have to be the case. If you want to be firm on the 90 to 120 <coughs> days and say we're just going to reintroduce these five firms, right. um, but realistically, <coughs> if you were going to revise or if you were going to revise the actual RFP itself and make changes to the document, 
it's short of doing just an addendum, yeah, you're right. going to end up needing to go back through LOI and, and open it back up for that situation. That would, the good news is you already have a, a good group of firms here. So if you made those changes. That could result in additional costs to the city, though, right, to go through the process of creating the LOI, then the RFP, then the, the whole. Okay. Yeah. Um, Sorry, I just realized for, I was shaking my head, and that's not being recorded. So yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, just for the edification of those who might not understand, um, option D, um, publishing a property disposition notice. Can you describe that a little bit more in layman's terms, what that means? Because that is my least favorite option, but I probably cannot explain it as well as you can. Well, everyone has their own procedure for this. The city has their own process for property disposition. The CRA has their requirements for that. Statute has its elements there. So I don't want to dive too deep into the elements that are squarely within Mr. Right. Trask's territory. Um, but essentially, this would be a publication advertising that the city wishes to We're just selling sell it. this property and for, we lose for a reason. And substantial control over what goes there. Yeah. Okay. You still have Mm. Some, I mean, you don't have to sell it just because you publish it. So if okay. someone came to you and you didn't like the proposal that they put together, it's not that you have to accept it, but it may be more of a. Okay. Those are all the questions that I have. I have some mm -hmm. items for discussion, but okay. if anybody has any other questions. I don't have any questions. I just have nope. discussion. No, no questions, straightforward. Uh, One question going sure. back to what? Councilmember Gannon was saying, if you had to put these in order of cost. That would be difficult to do at this stage. Okay. It will be, yeah, it would be difficult to do at this point. Um, I would say the least expensive option is obviously option A. a. So yeah. if we were going from a, a range of the most expensive to the least expensive in terms of additional costs incurred, A would most certainly be the least expensive. Um, and I would think option C is It'd probably your most expensive. The most expensive. Mm -hmm. And the others are gonna fall in there somewhere in the mix, in the middle. Thank you. Okay, I have one question. Yes, sir. Various options available to the city of Oldsmar. GIA will attempt to interview five of the short listed firms. Do you know why three of them would have not responded? Do you have any idea why? All we know is that they stated that they were not going to respond. They all, that's all that they did. They either called or sent a message saying, we will not be responding to the RFP. They did not give us any further detail. The other two did. One sent a, a pretty lengthy letter um, as well as resumes and their initial rough drafts of what they were thinking for the site. Um, and then the other sent a very detailed, lengthy email explaining mm -hmm. sort of their hurdles that they couldn't clear. Um, but some of those, I think we need more information mm -hmm. on some of the statements that were made in the explanations. They were mm -hmm. a little, um, they weren't quite to the level that we understood the, the discrepancy. So some of those, I mean, like I said, even those folks we would be calling up and saying, we'd love to talk through this specific topic with you and understand why that was a bridge too far, why we couldn't clear that barrier or why that acted as a barrier for you. So I don't know if this is rele relevant or not, but was there like a timeline? Was it a week before they said we're not going to respond or was it the day of or the day after? The actual explanations that were received, um, Danbury sent theirs about three or four days before the due date. Um, Pridgen sent theirs the day of. But the others, some of them came in a little bit earlier. I would have to go back and check the dates. Mm -hmm. um, and Ms. Donnelly may know. But I would, I, not off the top of my head, I don't know what the other three dates when they <coughs> actually said they weren't going to respond. Okay. Um, but we did receive something from all five. Okay. Well, thank you for all your hard work. Are there any other questions before we move on to discussion? All right. Well, we're here if you have questions. All right. You wanted to start out with discussion? Okay. Council Member Gannon, you want to start out? Sure. Um, <clears throat> so, um, 
when I reviewed these options, um, it, it did kind of, I appreciated the format of this um, presentation because it was kind of a pro-con exercise for me. Um, and I think um, each of the options has something positive, but also something that's, that slightly terrifies me. And my overarching thought is that any changes to the existing RFP that we created, any really, you know, different, you know, parameters in, in that RFP that we worked so hard to put together would really have to be in the best interest of the city. Um, I don't want to compromise the work that we've done so far. Um, and the community input that we've gotten so far. Um, to me, uh, option A, opening the door for unsolicited proposals is worrisome because we start to move away from what we decided what we wanted, what we decided we wanted. Um, that it sounds exciting, but okay, you know, how, then what? Okay, we have unsolicited proposals and then we're back in a position of deciding who to negotiate with or ranking them and we've done that and it was not fruitful. Um, option B to me um, did not seem as viable. That would be um, opening the RFP to the other firms that um, responded to the LOI um, because we already kind of decided that they didn't fit our vision and mission. So I don't see a need to revisit that. We've covered that ground. We've spent that time looking into those. Um, option C, I'm not ready to do because it would require uh, likely a new LOI, which would be an additional expense to the city. And I don't think we're th there yet. Um, I don't want to do a disposition notice. We've done a lot of work. I think it's worth seeing if there's something additional there. So of these options, um, option E is the most appealing to me um, because it keeps everything we've done um, so far in play as it's um, summarized here. And we can figure out through the interviews, you know, for the three that didn't give us any particular feedback, what the issues were. Perhaps they were minute. Perhaps there was a misunderstanding as to some of the criteria or, you know, what have you. But I think as things are changing, um, you know, I don't know if you saw on today's Daily Business Review um, email or Tampa Bay Business Review, you last, um, you know, Joe <coughs> Kokolakis' project at the Dunedin Gateway, the $30 million project that they, the headline said is now unviable as costs are rising. Um, and so they're trying to reimagine and, and save the, the project. But as the expenses for debt, construction, and land continue to grow, you know, I feel like those interviews would be helpful um, to learn what the drawbacks were. Um, and, you know, and maybe it was as simple as economic conditions. And that's fine. But to the extent that we could learn a little bit more about the work that we did, um, I would be in favor of option E. Thank you very much. Vice Mayor? Sure. Reference. No. Keep passing it Thank this you. way. Thank <laughs> you. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be happy to. Um, I think first off, it's important to highlight or re remember that, as was mentioned, there was a lot of time and effort put in, not by this council and not only by GAI, but by the community as well. And I think it would be, um, silly to let all of that go to waste just by walking away or dispensing of the property. So with that being said, I, I think we really should recognize the work that was put in and what we have thus far as kind of a foundational element of where we go from here. Uh, stepping through each of these options, a, I, I don't like it all because it's, there's no plan. And without a plan, you know, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. So I think that's, a, for me, an easy no-go. We may have gotten lucky before with getting unsolicited proposals for other properties, but that by no means means that we would strike gold again and get another fantastic unsolicited proposal that goes through a little bit of a churn and ultimately comes out the way the city would like to see it. 
as far as option B goes, to me, that, that almost feels desperate <laughs> or shows signs of desperation that, well, we didn't, we didn't get anything from the first five, so let's go to tier two. Uh, yeah. as, as, as highlighted in the cons there that, you know, the likelihood of even getting any proposals from those that already know they were excluded from getting to an RFP, I think that that just doesn't bode well. Option C feels like a lot of duplicative work. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely seems like it would be the most costly and expensing a lot more resource time and, and probably delaying it more materially than maybe we even think. And I would ideally like to avoid that. Option D, another con I kind of thought of is if we open the floodgates, that may inundate staff, GI, and whoever of stuff that we don't even want to look at, but we're going to look at it if we get it by opening that proposal out to everyone. So as far as option E goes, and I think this is important regardless of ultimately where we wind up, I feel it's very important that we really understand why we got no proposals. It's very nice that at least from two of the firms we got somewhat of an explanation. It kind of opened the door allowed us to peer in and understand to some extent. But if to, to really summarize that, simplify it for everyone to understand, and, and not only understand why they didn't submit anything, but, and not so much that it's a negotiation tactic, but to understand what would it take to get a submission? What, is, is it, as Council Member Gannon said, is it something minute, small, that is palatable for us on behalf of the city to consider tweaking <coughs> the RFP or things within it without materially affecting the vision. I think if we can understand that with the, that group of five, if we can at least get two, that's a starting point as far as what would it take to understand getting a submission. Understanding you know, that's going to take some time on behalf of GAI to, to help pry that information out and make it fruitful and something that we can act on. Um, so I, I agree with Council Member Gannon. I think E is, is our best option. I don't necessarily think we have to settle on this is exactly what it's going to look like right now. That's probably for um, staff and GEI to iron out, button up, say what's it going to cost us and, and direct from there. Uh, and I maybe I don't know if it would take a work session or not to kind of really stitch that all together. But to me, that seems like if we put the right plan in place to say, here's what we got so far, it's not worth bailing on. It, nothing says to me yet that this is just, you know, throw all the papers up and let's do something else with the land. I don't think anybody wants to do that. So I will pass on the reference. Thank you. To the next speaker. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Mayor. I'll move Graver, you want to go next? Uh, sure. You just spray that stone. <laughs> you mayor. What? I'm just saying, you got a mask on. Um, not to repeat everything that's already been said, um, I'm in agreement with option E. I think my point, and when we discussed it, when we didn't get responses, what I had said during that meeting was I was really hopeful to get the responses because I wanted to know why that they said no. And maybe the answer is just no, because we said no. And they might not want to give us more of that information, but we need to at least try. Um, a new LOI and a, a tweaked RFP, 90 to 120 days, no guarantee we're going to get any more proposals back. I think that's premature. We all understand market conditions, at least in, at, as a global sense of market conditions. We've been hearing it ad nauseum for a couple of years now. And so maybe that was it. But getting those specifics, asking GAI to conduct those interviews, will just assist us moving forward. Because maybe we're at a point where market conditions are just going to keep us here. Um, but the two letters that we received from, from Pridgen and then Stanberry, they were illustrative as to why those two specific firms didn't want to make a proposal. And that was very helpful. The other three, were they along the same lines? Maybe. But we don't know. So that's why option E, for me, is the way that I would like to move forward, at least at first, this next 60 days. In terms of a work session, all that stuff, again, I think that's premature. We don't know. But getting that information, 
would be most valuable at this point for me. So we, as Vice Mayor Knapp had said, we put all of that work in. Just throw our hands up, hey, let's just sell the land. No. Um, you know, the, the four folks that we didn't decide to move forward with, asking them, hey, do you wanna get back in? Okay, I think those would be pretty short phone calls, right? Um, so proceeding with option E is where I am. Um, I echo the sentiments of the vice mayor and council member Gannon, and I will turn it over to our patient. Sir. Our patient. <laughs> Thank you, sir, appreciate that. Yeah. Laura, can I ask one more question of you? So on option E, and, and just thinking on the other side of the five responses that we got, three of them basically said no. Two of them took time, took effort, explained what, they still seemed like they wanted to negotiate it. Could we split E, what would be the impact if we split E into interview the two, find out what happened, if there's enough information to continue on with those two, continue on, or should we open up to all five? I mean, I. We didn't ask for an explanation. We didn't even ask for a statement that they weren't gonna respond. So okay. the fact that all five of them said anything is a good sign. It means that they had enough interest to say, we really appreciate being considered, but we're not gonna be responding. And the two that gave us those full explanations, that, that wasn't requested or required or anything. They did that, I think, showing that they really thought through a lot of these issues and they just couldn't quite get there. Okay. So I would hate to not talk to the other three simply because they didn't give us a detailed explanation. They may have things that they're willing to conversate with us about in a phone conversation that they did not want to make public record by sending it to the city and putting it out for anybody to read they may have felt uncomfortable with that. They may be more comfortable having a candid conversation. And so that's why we would offer to do the interviews and not come back to you with you know, a verbatim recording of those conversations, but with a description of what the key issues were mm -hmm. and if there's any way to navigate those forward in some form of an addendum to the RFP to then reopen it back out for 60 days. Okay. So those conversations, I would, I would really not recommend eliminating the three just because they didn't give us an explanation okay. since it wasn't something we originally asked for. Fair enough. Okay. And there was a lot, I mean, those explanations were, I, I don't know if you had a chance to read yes. through them. They were, somebody put time into doing that. Crafting those responses was time intensive for them. And the folks that decided not to respond, I think we've heard a lot of folks say it could have been a simple, they read something and interpreted it one way and said, we can't do that. Whereas okay. they may have been fine with a whole bunch of other things. <coughs> so I think we want to make sure we have a very clear understanding of exactly why those five firms opted not to respond and what their biggest hurdles were. So that then we can figure out if those are hurdles that we can find a way to help them navigate or if it's something that is just going to be prohibitive at this point. If it's the fact that they can't get lending, they're not gonna be able to finance the project in the foreseeable future due to economic conditions that's not something that this council or us or them are going to be able to resolve. But at least then we know that it wasn't a problem necessarily with the concept. It wasn't a problem with the site. It wasn't a concern related to any of those things. Mm -hmm. And it was something that's beyond any of our reasonable controls. Okay. Thank you. Absolutely. So my thoughts on this, you know, immediately was the interviews have to happen. So that narrows it down to C, D, and E. E is really the best choice in my mind. I think that being able to go out, like she said, and interview what they went through, what they saw, what the misinterpretation was. Um, I, I live in this world every day responding to RFPs, so I can understand where the developers may have seen and misconstrued something. So I would be all on board for optioning. All right. Mayor. Thank you. I just want to say thank you to both of you for all your hard work, the city staff, especially all the hard work, Felicia, all the hard work you've done in this project and the council. Everybody's really involved in this. I really feel that your idea of reaching out to the five shortlisted people and trying to get more information, qualify them a little bit more, try to understand why they didn't submit something to us in writing or 
find out what the problem is, why they didn't want to. I think that's number one for me. And then I agree with the rest of the council. Uh, option E is to keep this alive and extend the opportunity for them to reach out back to us so that we can get some kind of a plan to actually come up with an idea or a concept uh, to build our downtown. I mean, this has been going on for a while and I believe everyone up here at the city council, we wanna build a downtown and I think you guys have done a great job and you're the forefront leaders of this and you need to continue to do that for us so that we can build this downtown and get it going. One thing that uh, Councilmember Gannon mentioned I wanted to bring up, she mentioned that there's a lot of projects around the area, St. Pete, Dunedin, Tampa, all of a sudden, if you're reading the newspaper, there's a lot of projects that are falling under because of financing, because of inflation, because of our economy. And that's kind of concerning to me. So I think as we move forward on this project, we need to just take baby steps, keep the communication open, and make sure that we're all in sync together so that we understand where we're going for our future, but not give up. Not give up on this opportunity for, for this downtown so that we can get something in, you know, structurally in place so that we can understand where we're headed for the future of our city. Because I really think we need this downtown. There's a lot of moving parts going on right now in our city. I think we're all aware of that. All the council's aware of it. There's a lot of things going on. And this is one of the main, main reasons why we want to move forward with this downtown area. And meeting with Felicia today, my last comment is, she mentions the Stanbury Development Group. I was on vacation when she sent that to me. I didn't see it for some reason, but I reviewed it with her today in my meeting. <coughs> that, that whole concept plan for them, I really like that. I think it's actually perfect in my eyes. So I want to you to continue if the council agrees and we're consensus with this. I really would like to continue with working with you and building the future of our city. Are there any other questions or any other comments from the council? No. Felicia, would you like to add anything? Um, no, sir, thank okay. you. Okay, all right. All right, so we wanna take a consensus on this. Do we want to move with option E or we wanna postpone? Tom, what should we do? A motion to decide which option you're gonna take and give directions to city staff and JAI as to what they're gonna do next. Okay, I think we have a consensus on Item option E, do I have a motion to approve? I make a motion to select option E and ask city staff to work with GAI and develop next steps for us to take in this process with option E. Perfect. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any other discussion on this item? Is, All, is oh. there a way to get a cost? Oh. I'm sure that will be part of the process. I know that's going to be part of it. I just, uh, I don't want to move forward with option until we negotiate. Okay, well, well that's, what, you want to answer that or? We'll yeah. work with Felicia and get a number to you and then she can bring it back to you at a future council meeting. Yeah, we'll have to approve that. Because yeah, it'll end up being a, an amendment to our scope. Okay, thank you. All right, so we're going to get a cost on that. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you very much again for that wonderful presentation. Next item on our agenda is the consent docket. This will be read by our city clerk, Kristen Garcia. You have the floor. Consent docket. Item four, approved minutes of the June 20th, 2023 council meeting. Item five, approved payment to legal counsel for June 2023 legal services. Item six, authorize city manager to advertise 2023-014 ITB citywide janitorial services. Item seven, award the installation of a lift at the reverse osmosis water treatment facility to Austin Construction Group, Inc. under the same pricing terms and conditions as the city of Tampa contract number 4211-0619 utilizing the job order contract consulting services of Gordian Group, Inc. under the same pricing terms and conditions as the City of Tampa contract number 41111317. All right. Does anybody wish to pull any item from the consent docket? With that, I need a motion to approve. So moved. Second? Second. Any other discussion on any of the items? 
All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Next item is City Attorney Tom Trask. Oh, you got the night off. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, City Manager Felicia Donnelly, item eight. Um, um, good evening. Uh, before I start um, my section of the agenda, I would like to introduce Mike Lavery. He's our new assistant um, a leisure services director, soon to be called um, parks and recreation director in the new budget, um, if you all approve. But I wanted to introduce Mike. He comes from a very long history in parks and recreation. He was a deputy uh, capital projects manager for New York City. Um, overseeing a, a robust collection of parks. I don't know how many parks, but it was it was a lot. And um, he recently uh, worked in the private sector doing construction management. And before that, he worked at the City of Clearwater in the Parks and Recreation Department. Another so, one. Uh, sorry. Oh. I wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> Did that come out loud? Uh, we did not work work together in there. We um, we missed our time at the city of Clearwater, but I wanted to take the opportunity to um, introduce um, Mike Clavery to you all. Welcome, Mike. Thank you. Good evening, uh, Mayor and Council. Thank you, Felicia. Uh, again, I'm Mike Lavery, um, the new Assistant Director for Leisure Services. Um, I'm replacing Alexis Wells, which is a uh, very big shoes to fill. So I'm going to do my best at that. Um, in the few short weeks I've been here, I've just been really thrilled to uh, to see all of the beautiful parks and facilities in this city, and and really look forward to working here. And e even more so, I've been very impressed by the uh, the staff and the team that you have here is is really yeah. phenomenal. Yeah. Um, just an enormous amount of support and uh, and great great teamwork. So very happy to be part of the team, and I look forward to working with all of you. Can we ask Thank you. Any Thank questions? you. Welcome, Mark. Thank you. Just like a little baby. Just question? a little a little question. <laughs> What excites you the most? Do you have a favorite sport? Is it pickleball? Do you like BMX? I, do you I, like the programming? I have not, I have not uh, been on the BMX track, but it is really cool. I have Be not careful, worked. Andrew. Yes. Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably already seen we the video. video. Yeah. Okay, I'll have, to, I'll have to look at the video, but I do. I, I, I have played pickleball, pickleball many times in the past, and I really do enjoy it. So. Um, again, very excited to be here. Thank you. So, Andrew, he was in your class for leadership. LOLP 20 no class way. of 2020. He was on the bus with us. The bad class. The he bad was on the bus. Yes. How exciting. Oh, wow. That's yes. wonderful. Yeah. Well, welcome. Well, welcome aboard. Thank, Thank you. you so much. We're looking forward to all working with you. Great. All of Thank us. You. Thank you. We always get the best people. Item number eight um, authorize the city manager to certify proposed millage rate of 4.05 mills to the Pinellas County property appraiser. The city maintained a millage rate of 4.75 mills from 1988 to 1997. From 1998 to 2005, the millage rate was lowered to 4.65. In 2006, the millage rate was 4.6. And in 2007, it was 4.0722. In 2008 through this year, 2023, it's been 4.05 mills. In the current year, the taxable as assessed value of the city increased from the prior year. The increase in the current taxable values resulted results in a rollback rate of 3.7687 mills. Rollback rate is a millage which will produce the same revenue as a previous year. Therefore, the rollback rate is lower than the proposed millage rate. The city is proposing a millage rate of 4.05 for the 16th consecutive year. In order for the property appraiser to prepare required notices on proposed property taxes, which will be mailed to each property owner by August 21st, 2023, we must return the certification of taxable value to the property appraiser by August 1st, 2023. The council may adopt a lower millage rate based upon decisions at the budget work sessions or as a result of public hearings on the budget, which will be conducted in September. However, the council may not adopt a higher millage rate than the rate now being certified to the property appraiser. For a home assessed at $250,000 with a $50,000 homestead exemption, the ad valorem taxes levied by the city would be $810. Um, staff recommends approval. Thank you very much. <clears throat> I need a motion to approve. So moved. How about a second? Second. Motion and a second. Any other discussion on this world breaking, world record item? <laughs> I, I mean, <laughs> since you said world record, you know, it, okay, so it's like this. It's really cool that we've been able to maintain the same millage rate for 16 years. That is, um, that is wonderful for our residents. Um, it's also important to remember that, I, I mean, I've been to the grocery store recently and 
and all of us were just talking about increased costs, but somehow the city has been able to maintain an extremely high level of services with that same millage rate, mm -hmm. without ever changing it. And um, we're about to go into our budgeting, um, you know, work session coming up on August 8th. And I think it's important to keep in mind that the only way you keep the millage rate the same while still providing the same or even higher level of service, in my opinion, mm -hmm. is by reducing costs, finding efficiencies, and that's great, but it can't be to the point that we are handicapping ourselves for the sake of a record. So I just want to, I want us to keep that in mind as we, you know, are, are, are proud of this, and I am proud of it, but also I don't want to sacrifice the level of services that we provide to our residents who expect it, mm -hmm. and, and rightfully so. We're, we have an incredible city, um, but I doubt anybody else has a 16th consecutive year, at least anywhere in Pinellas County. Um, mm -hmm. So just something to keep in mind going forward, but I am quite proud of our city and enthusiastic and looking forward to what we have in store at our budget work session. Mm -hmm. Vice Mayor, you have any comments? Just say a job well done. I, I mean, city manager has shared glowing remarks of how tight the belt the staff has made to make this happen. Um, but obviously, we don't want to cut off the blood flow. So <laughs> that, was a good of. that was a good analogy. <laughs> Hail Mary, right? <laughs> Better than a Hail Mary. Um, so yeah, shout out to staff for really um, making it happen. I'm sure the citizens will be grateful when they get their tax bills. Mm -hmm. Any other comments down here? Nothing for me. I just, you know, <coughs> amazing job by city staff. Mm -hmm. um, everybody was seeing this coming and making sure that we looked into efficiencies and workflows and processes. Um, if we go back to the elevator earlier, there was a significant savings that staff allowed through that process. So. Um, it's not unnoticed. I appreciate everything staff has done to keep this millage rate where it's at and hope that we can keep it there next year. But as Kitty Man, Councilman Morgana said, it may not be a record year, you know, so we have to hope for the best, prepare for the worst. So I just have one Thank comment. You. Thank you. I just have I just have one comment. This past Saturday, I attended the planning session for the Suncoast League of Cities. And what we do is we plan our legislative priorities for next year. Well, we got sidetracked. We got sidetracked because of insurance rates going crazy. Municipalities, some of the municipalities already are in their budget meetings and they're talking about the changes that are going on within their cities and insurance rates are up like 80%. They're like, how are we gonna insure all these vehicles in our buildings when the insurance rates are so high? How are we gonna keep our employees paid? And it just got totally off track. So I understand city staff, what you're going through with this budget plan and what you guys are doing, because there's a lot of changes going on, not only in our city, but around Pinellas County and also Hillsborough County was at the, at the meeting and so was Pasco. And they were all saying the same thing. So I do appreciate the 4.05 and the uh, 16th year, but I agree with Councilmember Gannon, there's gonna have to be a change. I don't think we're gonna be able to fiscally support all these amenities that we need to keep our city alive and be as successful as we are and as prosperous as we are. So I don't know, but thank you for all your hard work in keeping it that way. All right, with that, I have a motion. I have a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Item number nine. Item number nine. Um, approval renewal for medical and dental benefits with Cigna Health, vision benefits with IMED, Employee Assistance Program with Cigna Behavioral Health and Life Insurance with The Standard. Request approval of a new city paid long-term disability insurance with The Standard for fiscal year 23-24. In June of 2023, the city's benefit consultant, The Gearing Group, presented the city the employee insurance benefits renewal. The renewal is reflecting that in the past year, the city has experienced favorable claims and a low monthly loss ratios. For 23-24, Cigna's offered a 4% renewal to maintain the same benefit package for medical insurance coverage. The dental insurance will remain with Cigna with a 0% renewal and a rate guaranteed through 9-30-2025.
The vision insurance will remain with IMED with a 0% renewal and a rate guarantee through 9-30-2026. The employee assistance program will remain with Cigna Behavioral Health, which is a 0% renewal um, for one year. The employee group basic life insurance, AD&D coverage, and employee voluntary supplemental life insurance will remain with the standard with a 0% renewal for one year. The voluntary long-term disability insurance is currently with UNUM. It's 100% employee paid, and it's also up for renewal. The recent compensation classification and benefit study conducted by Evergreen Solutions, LLC, indicated that 88.9% of our peer cities offer employer-paid LTD to their employees as part of their benefit package. The standard is offered to provide employer-paid LTD coverage to the city at a very favorable rate, eliminate, eliminating the payroll deduction for those currently who carry um, long-term disability as a voluntary policy and extending the coverage to all full-time permanent employees. Therefore, staff is proposing to include LTD as an employer-paid benefit and offering it through the standard beginning October 1st, 2023. In addition to the above renewals, it is desired to continue to contribute to the employee cost of dependent medical insurance. In 2022-23, the city began subsidizing the cost of employee dependent health coverage. The recent compensation classification and benefit study conducted by Evergreen reported Oldsmar's recent increase in employer contribution is an important improvement, but still places the city behind the market average. It is recommended that the city continue to make incremental process to dependent care contributions to eliminate any competitive advantage in the marketplace. As such, the proposed plan, which is outlined in the attached executive summary, will lower the employee's contribution toward dependent medical coverage for an additional 10% for FY 23-24, as compared to this current fiscal year. Alongside the health insurance benefits, the city's plan to continue to provide a city-funded $1,000 HRA contribution to employees enrolled in the medical plan which will assist with out-of-pocket medical expenses such as co-pays and deductibles. Overall, the 4% medical insurance increase, along with the city's additional contribution for dependent coverage, will lead to a 5.5% increase in employer cost of medical insurance coverage and an overall of 6.8% increase to employer's cost when including the new paid LTD benefit. Um, staff recommends approval. Um, <coughs> much, um, our our Director of Human Resources and Sean from the Gearing Group are here in case you have any questions. All right. Does anybody have any questions? Anybody? No? All right. Then I need a motion to approve. So moved. I have a motion. How about a second? Second. I have a motion and a second and a discussion on this item. All right. Great job, team. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Next item on our agenda. Oh, by the way, thank you very much for that. Next item is City Clerk Kristen Garcia. And reappointment of Bob Harvey and Ross Roundhouse as regular members of the Planning Board. The terms of Planning Board members Bob Harvey and Ross Roundhouse expire at the end of July 2023. Both Bob Harvey and Ross Roundhouse are eligible to serve again. Ross, come on up. Mm -hmm. How you doing? Oh, good. Evening, everyone. Thank you for hanging out with us tonight. What do oh, you no think? It, it's great to see the council. It's great to see. <laughs> well, I'm glad that you stayed. Hang, you hung in there with us. And and uh, anything else you want to share with us? No, it's just been great being on the planning board and uh, seeing the agenda items ultimately come up to the city council. So. How many years you been on there now? Oh my gosh, I, I've been on so many, I kind of forgot. I, <laughs> I, uh, I remember actually, it's, it's, it's ironic you say that because I was sitting there having flashbacks of when we had the city council meetings and planning board meetings in the other building. That's so that tells been, it's me been a minute, uh, it's yeah. been a minute. Yeah. So, wow. Uh, yeah, I remember the, the setup over there and it's like, oh my, there's a few years uh, under the belt for sure. So. <laughs> Well, I think, and I think Bob's been doing it 30 years now. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Thank I'm, you I'm still, I'm, I think I'm in so. second right now. I think right, we're <laughs> well, I speak for everybody. We thank you for your service. We really do. We appreciate you, you know, Dearly. being involved. Right? Correct, yes. everyone? Anyone else want to add anything? Go ahead. And many thanks to Bob Harvey as well, that yes. he couldn't be here tonight. Right. All right. I need a motion to approve. Move. I have a motion. And a, how about a second? 
Second. All right, I got a second. Any other discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. No opposed. You're on the board. <laughs> thank you thank so much. All right, for your thank service. you. Great. Uh, item 11. Item 11, authorize city attorney to draft a resolution and to adopt a formal city seal policy. The city's official seal was adopted by ordinance 2009-12 on October 6, 2009. Section 406D of the city charter provides that the city clerk shall serve as custodian of the seal of the city and be authorized to affix the seal to such instruments of writing as is necessary. The city seal will be used subject to the following agendas and agenda packets, dais, background and council chambers displayed on windows of city buildings, official city flag, podiums and lecterns, proclamations, certificates, awards and trophies on checks, attesting official documents such as but not limited to resolutions, ordinances, agreements, contracts and oaths or other instruments necessary to authenticate official city documents, city forms and documents as determined. In light of budget constraints, existing uses of official city business will be grandfathered in. Wonderful. I need a motion to approve. So moved. All second. right. How about a second? Second. Any other discussion? Garcia is tackling these things. Yeah. Like going here. Set them up, yeah. I, I, I can't wait to see the letterhead. I, 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 I'm over that old letterhead. I'm dying to see the new logo on the... On oh, the, the new logo. Yeah, for the yeah. logo for the yeah. for our letterhead. Because when I write letters on that letterhead and it prints out, I'm like, all right, I'm ready for the new one. All right, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. City Council, item 12. Appoint the voting delegate for the Florida League of Cities Annual Conference, which is in August. And I believe, Andrew, you're going... I'm going. I'm going to need a motion to approve Andrew Knapp to be our voting delegate, unless anybody else wants to change that. So moved. So moved. How about a second? Second. All in favor? Any other discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Item 13, council comments. Council member Steve Graber, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Mayor, and happy birthday to you, sir, tomorrow. Oh, thank you. 29 again, looking Absolutely. good. Absolutely. Um, just I know it was mentioned during forum, and we've got a meeting before, but school's going to start back up soon, so just keep an eye out. Um, all of a sudden, you just start seeing all the kids start walking to school. It seemed like summer was just gone. I don't know if it's the same way in all y'all's houses, I'm guessing it was. Um, Jared, my best to you and yours, and hope everybody feels better. Um, as I mentioned in the last meeting, I got to take my daughter on a trip to D.C. in New York City. And didn't spend too much time in D.C., but we did take the train to the city. Got there at about 11 o'clock in the morning. Couldn't check into the hotel, so I said, just hold my hand and we're about to go. And so we had to check out of the hotel the next morning at 11, and our train left at 1. So with sleeping, we had about 15, 16 hours in there. In that time frame, that 7-year-old little girl and her father Saw the Empire State Building, took rides in cabs, went to Greenwich Village, saw the Statue of Liberty, went to Times Square, got street hot dogs, went to Macy's, went to Rockefeller Center. She got to dance on the piano in FAO Schwartz. We had pizza in Penn Station. I took her to Union Square. She took her picture in front of the Today Show. She got to see Battery Park, Madison Square Garden, and Radio City Music Hall. And at some point, her mother said, I know hot dogs and ice cream are delicious. Can you actually feed the girl? So um, I took her to a restaurant in Chelsea, which happened to be right across from where we were staying. Um, but she just said, "Do all, all we do is walk. And I'm like, all we do is walk. Mm -hmm. And the coolest thing she thought, well, so she'll ask you, if you ask her about the trip, she loved my sister's house and the Statue of Liberty. But there was also a city block that was dedicated to just one giant bounce house. And I guess it had like a like a disco inside and a ball pit inside. And she went on it four different times and finally was just exhausted. So that's why I had to take her to Macy's because we were right there to cool her down. So um, <laughs> other than a three hour train ride that turned into a six hour train ride where she absolutely owned it, not one complaint other than why is it taking so long? I said, well, you can't just jump off and walk. Um, so we were just kind of stuck there. Everything went off without a hitch. So it was fun. I just wanted to pass that good news along. That's all I had, Mary. Thanks so much. All right. Great. Councilmember Gannon. 
Thank you, Mayor Arias. The summer has gone by quite quickly. Um, one thing I wanted to mention about um, school starting again. So I'm, I'm sure the, the city has already been made aware, but a lot of our residents without children might not be aware that Oldsmar Elementary is going to be changing its car line. So instead of coming off of Bayview and heading in toward the traditional school's drop-off line, they're gonna switch it to the bus. So car line is now gonna be at the bus line on Federal. <coughs> you ever asked Jerry Beaverlin, where's Federal? <laughs> now everyone is going to know. <laughs> it, it is the road that juts from St. Pete Drive directly toward the back of Oldsmar Elementary School. We're there. So that's gonna be the new car line, which will probably be a lot safer, hopefully, a lot safer um, for students. But people are going to be like, what? <laughs> because remember, you've also got the crossing guards there, which is mm -hmm. great because we want students crossing where there are crossing guards. Um, and that is a school zone, too, also super important. And so what's going to happen is you're going to have a school zone. You're going to have kids crossing the street. But also, there might, in the first couple of weeks of school, be a significant backup of cars on St. Pete Drive. So just... Mm -hmm. Spread the word. It it dissipates usually after the first couple of weeks, but when you've got you know new procedures, it always takes a little bit. And um, I can say that I always immediately pull forward as soon as my as the next car moves. I do not. I am not on my phone. I swear it to you. <laughs> <laughs> but it, you might see some hiccups, so be aware of changes in traffic patterns and stuff like that, and be on the lookout for kids. They're just you know, Maddie's starting kindergarten, a lot of kids um, in the area um, going to be walking to school, riding their bikes to school, you know, for the first time. So that's exciting, but um, we can help them stay safer. Um, other than that, I, I just wanted to thank city staff for um, saving us a substantial amount of money. I was going to try to, <laughs> I don't want to read it from my phone, but City Manager Donnelly, would you be able to briefly summarize how city staff saved us 50 grand in the past week? I know it has to do with an elevator and water plant, but I'm not exactly sure how it happened. So um, there, there, there's, there's two different ways. One is that um, city staff has been investigating an elevator at the RO plant. And so it's very expensive after a plant is built. It was built with a elevator shaft, but no elevator. Um, times have changed, elevator configurations have changed. So- Wheel that in the front door? No, you can't. And so they did find a, um, a lift option um, at a third of the cost of what an elevator would cost. So um, the plant will be outfitted with a lift. The second is um, there's there was a project already in this in the capital improvement program, and it's for degasification at the RO plant, and so um, we were scheduled to go out to bid and to um, uh, you know procure a outside entity to do that, and um, and our staff um, uh, decided that they would um, do that themselves, and so the consultant that we um, uh, uh, would have hired, ha came out and said that our staff did an excellent job okay. um, at, at performing that. So we performed it in-house instead of going going out to procure an outside contractor. So I would have failed miserably in attempting to describe that. Yeah. Thank you very much. That's exactly the type of innovations and efficiencies Absolutely. that Council Member Buckman and Mayor talked about um, when it comes to tightening that belt before, not not to the point where we're cutting off circulation. No, but but you know, I'm just so proud of our staff. You know, when when um, the benefits agenda item um, came forward tonight, there wasn't you know any discussion, and I'm glad there shouldn't be any discussion um, when it comes to maintaining the staff that we have and remaining competitive in the public sector workspace. When we have you know. 20 to 30, but probably between 25 and 30 other cities that our staff could potentially go to and obtain better benefits, better pay for a similar position. 
we can't have that happen. We have incredibly talented staff here, and I'm just so glad that everybody was just immediately on board, yes, and thank you so much to Michelle Kutch and the folks at Evergreen for helping us, and Garing Group, um, for helping us understand where we were lacking and what we needed to do, and honestly, you know, being quite frank with us, where we needed to catch up. You know, dependent care, well, yeah, anybody with kids gets that. Anybody who's married gets that, you know. And as far as the long-term disability, you know, similar. You know, we didn't know what we didn't know until we did the study. So I just thank you so much for helping us keep those brilliant folks and bring in more brilliant folks who um, contribute to the overall constant and consistent success of this city. That's all I have, Mayor. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, Council Member Buckman. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, just two things. One, happy birthday to M Megan, my wife, first. Before oh. I do use, I can <laughs> Happy use that. birthday, Mayor. Yeah. Yes, I forgot to mention. Um, her birthday is this weekend. Unfortunately, we had to postpone the party, but we'll be coming back to that shortly. Happy birthday, Mayor. Um, there's something going on at Ford Pinellas that's coming down the pipe. Um, good for the city. Um, there's been basically an apportionment plan discussion going on for a couple months now there. And it looks like we have a special meeting coming up on August 3rd. And at that meeting, our seat that we share currently with safety and tarpon will most likely just be safety and tarpon. I don't know how the vote's going to go, but we believe it's going to go that route. If that happens, we'll have more representation there more often on that seat. So I'll let you know as soon as I, I'll get back to the city manager on that. Other than that, that's all I have, Mayor. And isn't it a two-year term or a three-year term? It's probably going to be a three-year term. It's changing to that, too? Correct. Okay, thank you. Anything else? That's it. All right. Then I have Vice Mayor Knapp. Thank you, Mayor. Just a couple of things. Uh, tomorrow we've got the next uh, current quarter's noise abatement <coughs> task force meeting. And, uh, you know, that's kind of an ever-present battle uh, to deal with the conditions surrounding that um, but we'll be there and and participate and see how we can continue to help the residents out as it relates to aircraft noise I uh, wanted to say thanks to Tom for coming by and sharing the news uh, Tom Price I should clarify for coming by and sharing the news uh, about the Hennessy's event this weekend I will not be able to attend I'm jealous uh, to not be able to participate in ribs. cooking some ribs or tasting ribs um, <laughs> I, I know they do a fantastic job with the wing cook-off, so I hope that, uh, as he alluded to, that they start to have more events to help drive some foot traffic to the West End and be the anchor for more downtown activity in the future. Um, as a couple of others have stated, summer has definitely felt like it has gone by swelteringly and fast. And uh, as of... August, when school starts, I'll be joining the club in the car line for the first time. Wow. So Whoa. looking forward to that morning go. routine. So uh, yeah, so much fun. <laughs> team, team no gap, right? The team no gap. No gap. Yeah. You I'll be on forward. that. I'll be you on that. Forward. You keep pay going. attention. Yeah. Keep going. You just keep going. <laughs> and uh, happy birthday, Mayor. Thank That's you. All, all right. I just have a couple things. I want to just share this with you because I thought this was really interesting. Paul and I went into Village Inn on Sunday morning for breakfast. We decided to try it. The place was packed. We're good. Couldn't move. I talked to the manager. He said that that weekend, this past weekend, they broke the record for all Village Inns in the entire state no. with the most sales. Wow. So Oldsmar is really cooking. Cooking breakfast. <laughs> no pun intended. Mayor, did you see the great other great news? Chick Fil A opened again. No, I haven't seen uh, that. I saw the fence come down. They're open again. The fence come down. So now the cars are going to be out the street again. Well, they're right next to Village Inn. It's just you don't yeah, have to go anywhere. Don't have to go anywhere. It won't be now because it's a double line. Yeah. Yeah. Double drive through. To solve the street. Issue. So the, I'm just I'm just happy about Village Inn because Daddy Daddy's grill was there forever, yeah. you know, and they left and then this took over. So that's a really cool success story. And then we've been gone for four weeks. It was fun to get some time off. I went to New York to visit Paula's dad. He's 93. He's hanging in there. For two weeks, we were up there. We helped him uh, every day, you know, feeding, helping him get around. So at the end of our vacation, we decided we had to get him into a, a facility, a home, because he can't live by himself anymore. So we're working on that. It was just great to be able to, to spend time 
The best time was taking my grandkids on Niagara Falls, the Maid of the Mist, Katie and I were talking about before the meeting. They loved it. They thought it was great going underneath the Horseshoe Falls, getting all wet. Um, it was a great, it was a great experience taking them and, and spending some time with them. So that was a well, a good vacation that I needed, but I'm ready to get back to work. And that's all I have. Thank you so much for the birthday wishes. I appreciate that. And with that, let's uh, go to item 14, approve the tentative agenda for August 1st, 2023. Does anybody wish to pull or add anything to the agenda? Yes, Mayor. Mayor. Oh, yes. I'd like to add, um, discuss payment of future legal fees related to Mayor Siraki's alleged public records violation. Uh, okay, sure. All right, anything else, Ed? All right, with that, I need a, uh, a motion. Why don't you give the motion to add that? I move to approve the tentative agenda as amended to include discussion of payment of future legal fees related to Mayor Siraki's alleged public records violation. All right, thank you. Second? Second. All, any other discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. With that, meeting adjourned. Sure. Thank you. So, Does anybody want a cupcake before you leave? No, thank you. The marriage assignment. You need your nope. signature right there. Authorized box. Yeah, but your son came and answered the door. He was oh, yeah. Okay. For the half off fee dollar. Yep. Yeah, and I handed him the stuff, and I was like, mm -hmm. I guess those can Yeah, they can't be the dollar. This guy's so white. Because I grew up.